to give a talk on getting started in amateur astronomy. His bio is John Raymond is a lifelong uh, resident of Virginia. He received his first telescope Christmas Day in 1980. Past president of Richmond Astronomy Astronomical Society, author of the book Asterisms for Small Telescopes and Binoculars, and an article, A System of Bino Viewing, currently in the sp spring 2017 edition of Amateur Astronomy Magazine. This session is an introduction to amateur astronomy. Astronomy, the oldest of seven liberal arts and sciences, has fascinated us from the dawn of humanity. Many are interested in pursuing the hobby of amateur astronomy, but how exactly? This presentation covers the fundamental questions of what exactly is amateur astronomy? I'm interested, what do I do? Uh, what resources can help me? Lots of money for telescopes. Uh, but uh, anyhow, so uh, it'll be a real, real treat. Please welcome John Raven. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the Novak crew for setting all this stuff up, having a wonderful event today, even if it's a little hot, uh, a little cloudy, hopefully it'll clear up and uh, we can look through some telescopes later. But uh, first of all, why are we all here? We're all here, obviously, because everyone hopefully is interested in astronomy. Now, why am I here? There's a very specific reason I'm here. Our keynote speaker had to come up all the way from Florida and you know how flying is these days, they can stress you out. So he asked the Novak guys, he said, look, I want you to find the worst, most boring speaker you can find so that by the time I get up to the stage, I'm going to get a standing ovation even before I say a word. <laughs> so let's see. So what is amateur astronomy? We are amateur astronomers, many of us, but what is it exactly? I mean, it's ki kind of something you know when you're doing it, you know you can look around here and see other people are doing, but what is it exactly? Now, a common explanation is that amateur astronomer studies astronomy solely for pleasure, whereas a professional astronomer studies and practices astronomy to make a living. All right, I have a slightly different explanation. Professional astronomers deal with hard facts and science. They have to be right. They've been wrong in the past, we've had new theories come along, they've been corrected, but they generally deal in the truth. Amateur astronomers deal in opinions. Some amateurs may say, well, the refracting telescope is better. Some may say, well, uh, solar observing is better because I don't have to do it at night. So we all have opinions. Anyway. So you can look at our speaker schedule today. We have some professionals, we have an amateur, we have some to do both. As an amateur, I can get up here and say whatever I want. It really doesn't matter, wrong or right. Because I'm just an amateur. My opinion on stuff really doesn't count because it's not going to be in the books or the newspapers. So, but Dr. Mike, he has to get up here and he has to tell you exactly what's going on and he has to be correct because his reputation is on the line. You know, he can't go back to the lab tomorrow and come up with some equations and tell everybody, hey, you know, my equations tell me that the earth is really flat. You know, he can't do that tomorrow. So, so when did all this astro amateur astronomy stuff begin? Well, the night skies fascinated us as humans from the dawn of civilization. Our very biology is tied to, diurnal, to the diurnal cycle of day and night. The plants and animals follow behaviors and cycles based on day and night, on the seasons and the years. So, one question, what causes the seasons? Anybody think about that? Anyway, something to figure out when you get into astronomy. Ancient man observed the patterns of nature and learned to observe the stars for measuring time. Example, time to plant, time to harvest, time the yearly flooding of the Nile in Egypt, time when the animals migrate, time for when to start seeking shelter from the cold. They kind of learn that when these stars are rising in the evening, it's time to do this. 
When these stars are rising in the morning, it's time to do something else. So, as these behaviors are tied to survival, it can be said that technically professional astronomy came first. Because they weren't just looking at the stars, oh, that's nice, you know, I like that. They were doing it because their survival depended on knowing when things were going to happen and when to predict when certain events were going to happen. So, when did amateur astronomy start? Well, the amateur in me says that, like us, the ancients got bored very easily. Young man, do you have a cell phone? Come here, I'm gonna, we're going to do a little demonstration. You don't have to bring it with you. You don't have to bring it with you. All right? Now, in the ancient times, what do people do when they got bored? What do, we, what do you do when you get bored? You look at your cell phone, right? Okay, I think everybody does. And I'm going to show you what ancients did back in the old days. We're going to pull out our ancient times cell phones. Here you go. Hey, It's a rock. <laughs> Wi-Fi wasn't very good, <laughs> nor was the screen size. So they quickly got bored with their ancient times cell phones and put them away, and they looked up at night. They saw the stars. They saw patterns in the stars and said, well, this pattern looks like a bird. This pattern, pattern looks like a guy. This one looks like a lion. They made stories about it. And that's something that every ancient civilization did, basically. Oh, you can have a seat now. Thank you. No, you can keep it. That's, your <laughs> that's, that's property of the county, actually. <laughs> so, today's world, there's no end to entertainment and diversions. If you have to wait in line at the post office, what do people do? They pull out the phone. Okay, I'm entertained for a few minutes till I can go ahead and do my business. So, back in the old times, they didn't have that. They had to make their own entertainment. So, but why are people still interested in astronomy in this modern world? Because I believe that when we look up at the sky, for those of us that astronomy hits like a thunderbolt, I think we remember where we came from, and we long to go back there. That's just my opinion, though. And I'm an amateur, so I'm allowed to have that opinion. <laughs> And, you know, the world's really crazy today. Crazy things are going on. People are acting in crazy manners. And I think a lot of that has to do with people growing up and never having seen stars. There are people that grow up in cities. They've never seen the night sky, never seen the Milky Way. And their soul has never been touched by the grandeur of the stars. And again, that's my opinion. I'm allowed to have it. You're not going to see it in any professional paper. So, you're here today, you're interested in astronomy, you've made, for some of you, this is the first step, probably. Okay? And after hearing me, it's probably your last step. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding. So, I have a saying. Where astronomy is, be there. And for those of you today, you heard, hey, they're doing some astronomy out at Crockett Park. I'm going to go there, see what's going on. And you're way ahead of a lot of other people who've heard about it, said, eh, I'm interested, but I'm, I don't want to drive all that way, you know. I'm interested, I got something else going on today, you know. I got to go to Sam's Club and get some oranges or something like that. So, I'm going to tell you a little story about myself. I grew up in rural Southside Virginia. Very, it looks very much like the roads coming into here. You see fields, woods, very few houses. There's one stoplight in the whole county, and that's only been there for 30 years. Very rural. So how did I get started? I really don't know how I got started in astronomy. I was interested in many things. I was interested in dinosaurs. I was interested in rocks and minerals. I was interested in insects. I used to love going up to the Smithsonian and seeing the insect zoo and the crystals and the Hope Diamond and play on the plastic uh, dinosaur. You know, I, I loved all that stuff. And I think my parents loved dropping me off there so they didn't have to deal with me. <laughs> but, um, you know, I was influenced by big things like Star Wars as a kid, Star Trek, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. A lot of these things hit me at a very impressionable age. And I remember in 1979, the pictures from Voyager came back on the news 
I was actually at my aunt's house playing around or whatever, and my mom said, John, come here, look at these pictures on TV. It was pictures of Jupiter, the red spot, the moons. And I found that very fascinating. And then 1980, Cosmos comes on the air. I don't know if any of you all have seen that, the original Carl Sagan Cosmos. Because my parents, we had four TV stations, CBS, NBC, ABC, and uh, public, public radio. I mean, not public radio, public TV. Cosmos came on that summer, I believe, and I watched that. And I love Cosmos. I was crazy about it. I watched it all the way to the end credits just to see the pictures of the stars. Like, you know, at the end credits, they showed pictures of flying through space. So anyway, a few months later, we're driving through Washington, D.C. It was a long drive to Washington where we lived, about a three-hour drive. And we're driving through Washington. It was cold. I remember it was cold that day. We stopped at a corner with a red light, and there was a newsstand. And at the newsstand, I saw a picture of Saturn, big picture of Saturn. I said, Daddy, can you get me that magazine? And, of course, they didn't want to stop. It was in the middle of traffic or whatever. So he pulled over, got me the magazine. Here I am today. Because of that magazine in 1980, it was Astronomy Magazine, I believe it was the December issue, it had a big picture of Saturn on it. So. But living where I did, that magazine was my only connection to the hobby. I didn't know anybody who did astronomy, I didn't know anybody who had a telescope. Didn't have a local club. Lo nearest club was about two hours away. And I didn't even know there was other people who were into astronomy. I just saw pictures of them in the magazine. And that, of course, that Christmas, got a little telescope, a little teeny tiny telescope. I had that for a number of years. And then from about age 17 to 27, I took a break from astronomy. I was going to school, doing other things, chasing girls, you know, stuff like that. In 1997, two things happened. We had Comet hale bopp big bright comet in the evening sky. And I said, wow, that's really nice. And another thing, I was, in, I was in class, I forget what class it was, and I saw this guy walking by, and he had a copy of Sky and Telescope magazine. He's just going along. I was like, Sky and Telescope magazine? I just read astronomy, and I figured, well, that's the only magazine I knew. There's another magazine? So he's, he's one of my friends, and, uh, you know, he was my connection to other people in astronomy because there's another person who actually reads an astronomy theme magazine. So I changed from that year. I joined the astronomy club. I bought another telescope, bought my second telescope, and I changed from being a person who thought about astronomy to a person who practices it. So I took my desire and put it into action. And it took me a long time because I was busy. I was, I was working two jobs, going to school, you know, other things. It, was, it wasn't, you know, just something that came like that. It, it was building up and it was going to happen eventually, because I, I always loved astronomy, always wanted to do it. But what now? Well, you're here, what do you do now? Okay. There's a movie that came out last year, a Marvel movie called Doctor Strange. And Doctor Strange, you know, he's a real smart guy, he's successful, anything he tried. Then when he tried doing magic, he sucked at it. And he said, teacher, how can I learn how to do this stuff? And the answer was study and practice just like he learned medicine, study and practice. So, I've been in this hobby for a number of years, and even now, I have no idea what I want out of it. I do things, but even now, the concept of what I want from the hobby is very nebulous. I like to go out and look at the stars. I look at, look at things through the telescope. I like to look at the sun. I like to talk with people about the hobby. I like to show people stuff. But for me, I'm still not sure exactly what I want to get out of it. But I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying the ride. So it's still a, a journey of discovery for me. It never seems to end. But one thing I have seen many times are people who jump into astronomy, and then a couple of years later, they jump out of it or they lose interest. How many people search for stuff on Craigslist? Anybody? Okay. Put, when you go to Craigslist, type in telescope and do a search. What are you going to see? A whole bunch of telescopes. What does the description say? Oh, we use this a couple of times, and then it's just sat in the closet for a number of years or whatever. So there are people that they say, okay, I'm going to do something about my interests, but 
what they did didn't seem to work out or they just lost interest. Who knows? It's not for everybody. There's always like one person in the family is into astronomy. The rest of the family thinks they're crazy. So I, I don't see many families where it's two, p two or more people into astronomy unless it's their business or something. So how do you, how do you become successful in amateur astronomy? Does anybody consider themselves to be successful in amateur astronomy? There are people you see, they take pretty pictures, they got a nice telescope. This guy's successful. Why are you successful? I like it. That, well, yeah, you, you have the desire. Yeah. You have the true desire. But if you're not sure how to be successful in astronomy, there's a very easy way. Make friends with people who are successful. If you want to learn about this telescope, Buy this guy a sandwich and a drink and say, hey, man, tell me about your telescope, you know? You know, I'm interested in one. Will this work for me? It may, you know, and he will give you his opinion, and it may or may not be right. You know, that's the problem with making friends with weird people. There are a few weird people in this hobby, you know, not too many. There are a few. So what do you want to do? You're here. What do you want to do? Well, we have many activities here, daytime and nighttime activities, and these activities are to show people who are new to the hobby things, activities and things you can do, like looking through a telescope, reading some of the magazines, joining some of the organizations, you know, helping out kids with their first telescope. There are people here to build telescopes. I mean, all sorts of things going on. But the there are many things to do, but I can't tell you what you should do exactly. I can make suggestions. That's all I'm going to do. To me, the very fundamental essence of amateur astronomy is looking up at the night sky, soaking in the beauty, and learning what all those little lights are. Now, is anyone here an English major or a literature major? Okay. Well, you, you know about Shakespeare. Well, anyway, you know about Shakespeare and the Iliad and all these other things, right? Now, do you know the alphabet? The alphabet? Any alphabet. Yeah. Okay. Now, what did you learn first? Did you read the Iliad first or did you learn the alphabet first? Alphabet. All right, everyone, you learned a language, you learned the alphabet first. Any math majors? Ma'am, do you know your numerals? Okay, why do you know your numerals? Yes. In order to be successful in math, you have to know the difference between 5 and 7, right? Now, some people have very bad handwriting and it all looks the same, but in general, you have to know the basics first. Start with the basics, because the basics are easy. This hobby is so easy to get into and so easy to do, but it can also be very difficult. But I tell you, start with the easy stuff. So, where's my magazine? There we go. This is Astronomy Magazine. This is a magazine I started reading hmm, a long time ago, almost 30 years ago. But all the Astronomy Magazines are pretty much the same. And I say the most important thing in these magazines is the centerfold. Okay? okay? Guys, you, you with me here, guys? The centerfold, that's the best part of the magazine. That's right. This map and this information on these two pages is what I consider to be the very fundamental essence of amateur astronomy, the stars, the sky. Going out and looking up and saying, well, which one is this? And figuring out which one is which and getting to know them. Because that information you can take with you everywhere. So everywhere you go and there's a dark sky, you can do astronomy. You don't have to bring any equipment or anything. Yes, sir? Oh, okay. He's telling me to shut up. I get it. <laughs> so, in doing, if you do this, some questions are going to come up. What's a star? What's a planet? What's the difference? What is the sun? What is the moon? You think, well, everybody knows what the sun and the moon are, but if you were study them, those things are very complicated. Those bodies are very complicated, and they do very complicated things. So you can know them on a very informal, basic level, or you can say, well, I'm very interested in the moon. I'm going to learn all about it. 
And there are people that all they do is study the moon, even today. You think, well, we've been to the moon, we've explored it, we know all about it. No, no, it's still, still a lot going on up there we don't know about. So, one of the ways that I got started in astronomy after I was into it, other than reading magazines, I got into some books. And I brought a selection of books here because, um, you know, my, my cell phone is a rock. So I don't have uh, internet, but I, I love books. So the book all about telescopes, telescope equipment. I get, this is in my local library. Cosmos, the TV show that got me started. I got the book, I think, that Christmas, too. My parents are, um, my father was a college professor, so, you know, we had a lot of books. Field guides, you've seen these field guides in the bookstores or whatever. They have one on birds. You know, any, any sort of subject. And these field guides, um, you know, I, I'll still read this thing. I say, what am I going to read tonight? Oh, I'll read the book about the constellations and the stars. Uh, one of the best books for beginners in astronomy, Turn Left at Orion. Your, I think the Astronomy Club probably has a couple of copies you can borrow. The library might have one. Or they can get you one. A lot, a lot of books here. Now... This is called Burnham Celestial Handbook. If you've not been in astronomy for a while, you probably haven't heard of this book. But anyone who's been in astronomy for a while has heard of it. It's a 50-year-old book. came out a long time ago. But the only section in here that everyone should read is the introduction. The introduction's a few pages long, and it's just a very moving and very profound statement on amateur astronomy just in the introduction. So don't, you don't have to read the technical stuff or look at the pictures. And, you know, just read the introduction. And then, of course, I had uh, borrowed this for today, Night Watch. It's a very good introductory book on amateur astronomy. Now, but of course, I say just get the magazine first. If you're interested in astronomy, get the magazine. And I get the magazine now and you know, I still read the articles, you know, and look at the pictures because this is my connection to the hobby, so to speak, other than, you know, being in the astronomy club. So, since I'm running out of time, uh, any questions? Yes, sir. Right. Yes. So I do know that the Orion can never last around Christmas time. Uh huh. Years, but is there a program, a magazine, or something that says this week these are up in the sky? Yes. Well, the like I said, the astronomy magazines have a monthly star map. They usually have a monthly column on things to look at. And anything they say is interesting to look at are things that are interesting to take pictures of. Um, there's an, one thing I forgot to mention. When a lot of times people say, well, I'm into astronomy, what should I buy? I want to get a telescope. And what do people usually say and who are into astronomy? They say, don't get a telescope, start with binoculars. Because binoculars are small, they're easy to use, anybody can use them, you can use them day or night. And some, pe some astronomers only observe with binoculars, they never go on to a telescope. Uh, I never answered your question, did I? <laughs> but any of the astronomy magazines usually have a monthly column. I mean, they're online now, too. Um, and there are no end of websites devoted to astroimaging. It's a very popular subject. Um, I'm not into I'm more of a visual observer, but um, your problem that you have is very common. And I would advise you start reading up on, hey, what's in the sky? What are the major nebulas? What are the bright ones? What are the interesting ones? And uh, I would suggest, because the brightest, the biggest and brightest ones have thousands and thousands of pictures taken, maybe try finding one that you can't find a picture of and take it yourself. You know, there's a lot of obscure stuff out there that's very uh, striking visually that people don't know about, so they don't take pictures of it. So, so this is a free, free to download 
uh, star chart that shows what's up in the evening. It's free. It's available at uh, uh, skymaps.com. Mm -hmm. we, we printed out several of them, and they're, they're available here. But it, it gives you a, a list of targets that you can get with binoculars, small telescopes, and the like. It's an awesome resource. Mm -hmm. Very good. Another thing people ask, well, I have a telescope, and I see this when I'm at the star parties, guy next to me, I, I just bought this telescope last week. What do I look at? What do I do now? And I say, start with the things you can see. Look up. If you can see it, point your telescope at it. Point your binoculars at it. And uh, people say, well, I just want to see galaxies. I don't want to look at stars. I want to see galaxies. And I say, if you can learn to aim your telescope at the things you can see, you'll get good at aiming it at things you can't. That's why I always say, start with the base. Start with stuff that's so easy, it's almost too obvious. And sooner or later, you get the hang of it. Well, thank you, folks. And I think I'm pressed for time, so <laughs> appreciate it.